All right, today's video, we've got something you don't see that often, which is a Domico Convoy 1 from Domicrest. This was a, a very early uh, 2781 rig, and they really don't come up very often on eBay. So um, I snapped this one up because also unusually, um, this has actually got the original paintwork on it, and it's actually in rather good condition. Got what, what a little uh, blemish on that corner, but other than that, that is in... For these very good condition because they are known to suffer with the cases on these um, uh, this is this one is serial number eight double one two four eight seven oh I don't know if that really meant that they made that many and as you can see on the back there they have uh, uh, a specification of it running off of DC 12 volts we're going to give this a clean up we'll get some foam in there and give it a, a jolly up but first let's see what it's doing well find a microphone for it first and uh, get some figures down for it now I always do this whenever I get a radio in with a customer supplied uh, um, lead or in this case this is uh, my own radio and it's always worth checking the fuse as you can see here the person it's uh, a 2 amp fuse and the fuse is blown and they've wrapped a little bit of uh, fuse wire <laughs> around the fuse uh, in absence of a 2 amp fuse now uh, I would say that's at least a 5 amp uh, piece of fuse wire there so uh, not really very good so we'll pop this on the supply, we'll current limit it and uh, we'll see what kind of current this is drawing first before we go burning away any fuses because there might be an electrical fault, uh, might be the reason why this is uh, blown. Right, for mic wiring it's the same as a Rotel, if you look on the charts, this is also the same as the Sun uh, 01 as well, it's exactly the same chassis inside. So uh, if you've got one of those radios or mics you'll be okay. Okay, so turning it on. Uh, it's good we see we've got the, the meter lamp working, that looks like a proper bulb and not an LED. And it does look like we've got all the segments on the di channel display as well, which is really nice to see. That can be a bummer if that's not uh, not the case. So, we have them all there. So let's see what we're getting uh, transmit power wise. And we key up and you'll see the it's got the red, the um, meter light changes to red on TX, which I do like actually. That's rather nice. So let's have a little look what we're doing. Okay, we're just doing shy of four watts. So this is probably be a very quick uh, video. This one, a quick tune up. Uh, let's uh, write that down then and just pop the TX's four watts. Let's check the deviation. One, two. The deviation's very low there, as you can see. So we'll correct that for them. So we'll say. 1.2 kilohertz I'm going to give that. All right we're on 0.5 of a microvolt and straight away it's doing 12 dB the 0.5 of a microvolt so uh, that's pretty good so I don't think it <laughs> I really don't think it's going to need a huge amount just a good clean up this. Uh, let's check the uh, uh, frequency just check it's uh, on frequency. There we go that's pretty uh, pretty good isn't it 27791 that's well in spec We'll probably just bring that up a little bit, but that's still well inside what's uh, allowed, so that's good. There's an incredibly stiff case to get off the top here. As you can see, this is uh, this is pretty much unmolested. I'm looking down into the cores, and I can't see that the uh, screwdrivers have been in there. Uh, it does actually have a relay there, as you can see, transmit and receive. And uh, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I can't see any uh, bad capacitors uh, on first visual inspection anyway can't see any bulging ones uh, there may well have been the odd one change because I can see a different colour capacitor there, a grey one but that sometimes does happen ok well this is looking rather rather splendid inside ok right, we've just out what all these uh, are here we've got the FM detector there low power adjustment power meter right at the back there TX, TX TX there TX and TX, RX, RX, RX meter there. There's one under that bit of tape. There's another can there. The VCO, which you shouldn't probably need to touch. High power adjust there. Deviation, mic gain, squelch, and another RX one there. So if I, a bit of um, dazzlement off the lights, I perhaps turn the lights off and do that, and then you can pause that and print that off, hopefully. It'd be good enough quality for you to uh, for you to use. Now, one thing I'll show you on this radio, which is a bit unusual, is that the chassis of this was actually shared. I mean, it does. If you look at it, 
it's got that kind of AM set look about it, hasn't it? Like a sort of an American set. It's got that kind of look. And if you notice the meter, the meter is actually calibrated up to 10. You know, the old spinal tap thing. And um, so that means that um, it was actually used on 10 watt radios, this. So um, when we adjust for transmit power, we'll adjust the, uh, adjust the needle up to 4 there. Uh, assuming we can, we well, we know we can get four watts out of it. So I just thought I'd make a note of that because this same chassis was used on the 10 watt AM sets. So um, for calibration purposes, that's what we'll do. Right. Okay. Uh, if there's anything to say when I'm doing the tune-up, I shall say it and film it. If not, we shall come back hopefully with some improved results. It's always worth taking both cases off. You can see here. Just took the case off and we've got a broken uh, joint there, there's a break on the track so I'll do that little repair first and have a really good scan about the PCB just to make sure there's no other little issues there. I mean it appeared to work okay so that may well have just been making, albeit a little bit intermittently, but we're gonna try and take the front fascia off uh, just to clean it so um, we'll do that as well. To lift the front fascia you have to take the plastic or lift the plastic, uh, so we're not going to do that. We're just going to clean it from the outside. Right, so let's get on with the uh, the setup. And we've done that little repair there, so that's all good. I don't think there are any more. So hopefully now it'll just well work. Fingers crossed. All right, that's tuned up nicely. The squelch is a little bit wishy-washy in these. It's not ideal. Um, I've put a bit of tape back over that can there. If you ever do see tape over a can. Always put it back. I mean, obviously the original tape uh, has long since gone off on this, but um, some of you might not realise, but the reason that is there is because when you pop your case back on, your speaker cone sits down inside there, and on some designs it's very, very close to the, the can, uh, the cone of the speaker. So that's why they put a little bit of tape over those cans. So if you ever see that, that's the reason for it. It's not to stop people tampering with those. Um, so yeah, so that is all fine. Um, I, it, it does seem a bit strange for transmit power to, uh, well that's upside down, for transmit power to adjust the meter like this. But that is, that is how you adjust it. It's a 10 watt scale, because like I say, these were AM radios and they really do have that look of a sort of an American AM radio, don't they? So um, that's why uh, you have to readjust it. So I know somebody has been in here and calibrated that because they've they whacked the meter up too high. And um, so now it's as it would be on factory. But um, of course, you know, some people, you know, particularly if they've got a poor SWR on transmit, will see that meter and think it's something's wrong. But um, so uh, but there you go. It's probably not going to leave my uh, collection this one just because of... Uh, quite ra how rare these are now you don't see so many of these about and this one is in really nice condition so um, I'm really pleased okay so that's all done um, yeah I forgot to add uh, one for the frequency you probably could have worked that out for yourself though VC1 down there to adjust your frequency so I've added that to this little diagram here so um, yeah it's all good the relay is good unlike the last two uh, LCL communicators I've done where that's been uh, a problem uh, and like I say, you can adjust the TX power with this um, adjuster here on transmit. So that's quite a useful feature that you see on much later radios as well. So you can tune for optimal on your TX there, and then you can adjust that for maximum power, which is quite nice. So uh, yeah, uh, I'll just check the PA function, give this a bit of a clean, and then we'll see if we can raise Mick for another test. And there we go on frequency 27.79126. A little bit high because they naturally drop a little bit with age so there we go it's just dropped to 125 so absolutely perfect so there we go and we're looking hunky dory on the uh, SDR as well so we're happy days I've cleaned up the uh, the fascia and the uh, the outside case I'm just going to put some little protective washers in here now uh, in between the the bracket and the case to stop the case getting scratched up well, we can't leave that scabby old mic label on there, can we? Let's just print one off. That was the only picture of a label I could get off of uh, Richard's video. So, uh, yeah, couldn't see any other pictures of it online. <laughs> 
There we go, it's looking a bit tidier now. Got the uh, convoy label on the microphone, and um, we'll tap Mick up and see if he's around. We'll do a radio test. I'm about to open the window, it's kind of warm in here, but I really like the way this looks. It's really got that AM uh, rig look about it, and of course, of course, in the different guys, it was an AM radio, wasn't it? Hence, this uh, power meter that goes up to 10 there, you see. So, um, I'll put a little call out for Mick with the uh, convoy mic. Look at that, beautiful. Hi there, Mick. I've got the Convoy 1 here. This is um, a very sort of, uh, well, quite a rare beast these days, um, particularly one in, in uh, good condition anyway. And um, I've just given this a tune up and uh, we had a little bit of a, a mess around with the deviation, as you know, because it, it's got a mic gain control and a deviation control. So we just had to uh, play about a little bit to uh, get it to play ball there. But um, I certainly like it. It's uh, It's got a very unique... Um, circuit it uses mosfets in the finals and uh, in the receiver stage it's a very strange design but it seems to work okay and um, these are quite well sought after these old sets because they're hard to get hold of i wonder how it sounds to you there mick yeah hello this is mick at this end uh, with paul and he has been servicing uh, a convoy one and the audio coming to me now is 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 very very good indeed so uh, I'm, I'm pleased with what i'm hearing now so um the quick a brown a fox jumps over the lazy dog is that long enough for you paul yeah you sound absolutely fine on this uh, mick is using a, a mustang cb radio there i think it's a mustang 1000 isn't it with the roger beep he likes his roger beeps and uh that's a, a nice uh, a retro radio as well, isn't it, with all the chrome and everything. And um, yes, I really like the way these look. They uh, and, and it's unusual, isn't it, the uh, the meter that lighting up red and then uh, going clear. And um, yeah, that uses bulbs as well, so there's no no LEDs used in any of that. And um, it's nice to have. Well, it's nice to have one with a case that's in such good condition because they are quite well known for the cases. Um, all the paint coming off of them <laughs> so where it's got any little rust spots on it i've actually treated it with some rust prevention uh, paint so uh, hopefully it'll be good for another 40 years now mick and uh, it's a nice one to have on the shelf i really like the look of this one it's a definite keeper rog so uh, yeah I'll, I'll pass it back around to you for a final and then i think we'll wrap the video up but um thanks for another another uh, audio test yeah okay paul thank you for that uh, signal strength year nine with me, very good signal. Um, the audio is now fully quieting as I would expect, and uh, it just sounds perfect. And yes, you're right, I, I am on a Mustang CB2000, and I'm speaking to you who has been servicing a Convoy 1. So which you are receiving on now so back to you paul and yes you do sound good okay that's brilliant mick and uh, thanks again i do appreciate you uh, taking the time in your busy schedule um for me to uh, test these radios with me uh, like i say sometimes you just don't like with the mic gain thing i'd i got it on the deviation and it looked all right but because uh, i got the mic gain too, too high i didn't realize it was clipping so you know what i mean it's really nice to have someone to test them against and this is why, of course, we always do this, uh, so that we get them absolutely spot on. Okay, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll wrap the video up now. So if everyone's been watching, thanks ever so much for watching. And uh, keep an eye out on the channel uh, for some more repairs and some other ham radio stuff actually coming up. I've just got to, uh, I'm just waiting for a few bits to come in the post and uh, we'll get out and test a few more radios. Okay, with that one, we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.